I want to try and justify the speed differences that I've been talking about in the previous videos using an empirical experiment. Now, I know already that I'm getting myself into a little bit of trouble by doing this, because as somebody that studies algorithms and data structures and actually teaches courses in those things, I should be the first person to tell you that you need to be very careful before you just trust timing data. You don't necessarily want to jump to conclusions just because of the number of seconds that a program takes. Because remember that the uh, length of time an operation takes on a particular input may not tell you the whole story about how long that operation is going to take in the grand scheme of things, as your program goes out there into the world and accepts lots and lots of different inputs. So it's important to understand first that most of the point of the experiment I'm going to show you is just to give you some conceptual model of what I mean when I say certain operations are slow but also that these experiments have been, ha have been set up relatively scientifically. So they're all uh, designed to treat every data structure that's being tested as equally as possible. And for those reasons, I think it's a legitimate uh, reason to do an experiment like this. But be very careful in general. Just taking the timing of how long it takes a program to run doesn't always give you the full picture of the performance of that program. The reason I'm doing this, though, is to try and uh, put some meaning behind those words I keep using, like fast and and slow. So the first example is, I would like to time how long it takes to do certain operations on lists versus vectors. This is relevant to inserting values at the beginning of a sequence versus at the end. And I spoke earlier about how that is one reason you might choose a list over a vector, is if you want to do insertions at lots of different places. So I want to talk first about the, uh, the way I've set up the experiment. Uh, so I have this uh, special object of type stopwatch. And stopwatch is an example of one of those small appliances that we've seen all semester. The difference is this one isn't part of the standard library. It's actually an object I created myself. And I'm not going to show what's in this header file just yet. We're going to come back and talk about that later. It actually is sort of the gateway into the next part of this course. How do we make our own small appliances? I am deliberately not showing off how the stopwatch works internally because I want you to believe that it's possible to use such an object via encapsulation and abstraction. The stopwatch internally behaves sort of like a stopwatch you might have in real life. You hold the stopwatch in your hand, you press a button to start the stopwatch, you press a button to stop the stopwatch and you read off the number on the front. Do you actually know what's happening inside the metal case? And do you need to? And I would say the answer to both those questions is no. I, I might have some idea what the stopwatch is internally, but I don't care. It's encapsulated. I am using the stopwatch via the abstraction, via the interface on the outside of the case. And we're going to do the same thing here. So this stopwatch has functions like start and stop and I can read off the time in seconds that have elapsed. Uh, and so what I'm going to do at each step of this timing experiment is I've set a number of elements up at the top of my code. I'm going to make a new list. Um, this would be the std list tester. I'm going to add that number of elements, so num elements. I'm going to insert that using push back. Notice how the elements I'm inserting are just squares of integers. Uh, and then I time how long it takes to insert all of those elements together. And then I print that out. Okay, then I'm going to try doing the same experiment, but I'm going to insert at the end. Uh, I'm going to deliberately use dot insert for this, because I want to prove the point that maybe you could argue that if I use push back on one data structure and dot insert on another, maybe dot insert takes longer. So I'm deliberately going to use dot insert to also insert at the end of my list to try and compare the running time of push back versus dot insert. And I'm going to insert the same number of elements. They're going to be the same actual list of elements in the same order to keep things scientific. And then I'll time that as well. Between each test, I'm going to create a list for test number one. At the end of the test, it gets destroyed because I'm in a scope. And then I create a new one for the beginning of the next test, again, to remain scientific. I don't just want to clear my old list. I want to make a brand new uh, list because that way, in case there's any difference, uh, it doesn't uh, affect the outcome of the test. And then finally, I'm going to use dot insert. I'm going to create a new list again. I'm going to use dot insert at the beginning to add that large number of elements at the beginning of my list and then print out how long that takes. So just to explain why I'm using dot insert and not push back. I want to do the same experiment on lists and vectors. I want to compare how long each of these different trials takes on a list versus a vector. Lists have push back, so do vectors. Lists have dot insert, so do vectors. But vectors don't have push front. So I'm not using push front in my test sequence because that wouldn't be fair to the vector. So I'm able to write this exact same code for lists and for vectors. So here with this vector, I do push back for the first test sequence. I use the same number of elements, um, and then I do 
dot insert at the end and I do dot insert at the beginning. So the code that I've written, and you can download the code and take a look at it, the code that I've written is identical for the list and vector case, except that of course I'm using a vector in the vector tester and I'm using a list in the list tester. So I'm going to run these and I'm going to use my stopwatch object just to time how long it takes in each case. Uh, I then later have some tests of the, the time it takes to do searching, to compare the search time of lists to the search time of sets. So I'll start by running the, uh, the tester to time the insertion time into a list. All right, so I run that um, and I take a look at the result and it prints out that inserting 100,000 elements into my list with pushback takes 0 0.015 seconds. Using insert at the end takes 0 0.011 and at the beginning takes 0 0.012. Notice that inserting a bunch of elements at the end of a list and at the beginning of a list has a relatively similar timing. When you use timing experiments like this, it's useful to run them a couple of times because you never know whether stuff running in the background on the computer has some effect. Um, so I'm gonna run it again. Uh, and I'm going to show off that, broadly speaking, the numbers are pretty much the same. So 0 0.015, they're not off by orders of magnitude. They are off a little bit. So instead of 0.011, it's 0 0.01. But if I run it a few times, I I'm noticing the timing is relatively consistent. It's in the same ballpark. So to time inserting at the end of and beginning of lists, I get numbers that are 0, 0.0 something uh, when I'm inserting 100,000 elements. Let's do the same thing with a vector. All right, so I'm going to run it a few times. Again, to try and make sure that there's no uh, noise in the numbers that I look at. Okay, so I'm going to go back up to, up to the first time that I ran it. So here's my list, and maybe we'll make this window bigger. Um, here is my, the last time I ran the tester for the list insertion is this. Okay, so inserting 100,000 element at the end of a list takes 0 0.016 seconds for a list. For a vector, it takes way less time, 0 0.006. That's noticeably different than for a list. Inserting at the end of a vector also takes the uh, same ballpark, so not too far off from a list. Uh, and it's consistent, 0 0.009 or... or um, point uh, zero zero eight seconds uh, but notice how long it takes to insert at the beginning and I mentioned it you know earlier that that is the key distinction both lists and vectors are pretty fast inserting at the end it isn't that big of a surprise to me that a vector is a bit faster because a list has a bit more overhead adding a new node to the end of a list does take a little bit more work um, the problem is inserting at the beginning of a list is congruent with inserting at the end which makes some amount of sense based on what we know about lists inserting at the end of a vector takes way longer I think that's an order of magnitude longer. So not 0, 0.0 something, 0. 0.6 seconds to insert 100,000 elements. That is way longer, more than 10 times longer. Um, it's actually about 50 times longer. Uh, and that's consistent, 0. 0.06 seconds. That wasn't just a fluke. That wasn't just noise. Now, one of the reasons we should be careful about looking at timing experiments is that all they tell us is how fast it is on this input. They don't give us very much information about how the data structure scales. If I make the input way bigger, how much worse does the problem get? Um, it would take, um, because eventually if I use large enough numbers, it'll take so long that the video will become unwatchable. I'm only going to do one more experiment, but I encourage you to download the code and try a few other experiments yourself to investigate how long um, it takes as the number of elements gets larger and larger. So I'm going to correct the number of elements from 100,000 to 200,000 in both testers. And then I'm going to recompile. Okay, so we'll recompile my list insertion tester and we'll recompile my vector insertion tester. There we go. And now I'll rerun them. So I'm going to time the, the uh, insertion into a list. And I'll notice it is inserting 200,000 elements. Um, recall that when I was inserting 100,000, it took about 0 0.01 seconds. When I'm inserting 200,000, it takes about 0 0.02. So it scales about linearly. So if I double the number of elements, I double the total time. And just like before, if I'm using a list and I insert at the beginning or the end, the timing is pretty much consistent. So inserting at the beginning and at the end takes approximately the same amount of time. Uh, or it's in the same ballpark. We can, we're noticing a few differences, but again, ballpark 0. 0.0 something. Okay, so now I'll try, I'm going to recompile it again, but I'll try the vector insertion tester as well. Uh, whoops, I'll type the name correctly. And you might notice the visible delay. So again, inserting 200,000 elements, and so for a vector inserting at the end, well, 100,000 elements would be 0 0.006, and here it's 0 0.012, so it scales about linearly. So I double the number of elements, I double the time. Recall that inserting 100,000 elements into the, the beginning of a vector took about 0.6 seconds, and here it takes 2.4. 
So I doubled the number of elements and the running time got multiplied by four. It quadrupled. That doesn't look good. Um, I encourage you to try what happens with 400,000 elements. It would create a pretty boring video, but it gets much, much worse. As the number of elements gets larger and larger, this gets blown way out of proportion. And so the disadvantage of a vector gets bigger and bigger as the vector gets bigger. And I should also call your attention to the fact that 200,000 isn't a very big number. In this course, we will work with vectors with a million things in them. And so if I have to insert a bunch of stuff at the beginning, I probably don't want to use a vector for that. Sure, it's true that a list takes a little bit longer than a vector um, to insert at the beginning or the end, but it doesn't have this ratcheting up issue where I'm inserting at the beginning and the amount of time it takes is longer and longer as the number of elements I'm inserting increases. So I hope that that's enough of a demonstration. I'll run it one more time. That's enough of a demonstration that there are reasons we would choose different standard collections depending on our use cases. If we're inserting at the beginning, that's one reason I might want to use a list instead. Let's now talk about searching. So uh, we've demonstrated, I hope, that if I try to insert elements, uh, depending on where I'm inserting them, list or vector might be a better choice. Let's now talk about searching things. So I want to do a benchmark that times um, inserting and then searching for a bunch of elements in a list, a vector, and a set, and an unordered set. This is a bit more complicated because you could argue that um, a set, for example, has fast insertion and fast searching. A vector has fast insertion but slow searching. And therefore, it might not be fair just to compare the time it takes to search. I might want to include the time it takes to insert, just in case one data structure happens to push some of the time from searching into insertion or vice versa. So to do that, I'm going to use I'm going to do two timing experiments at once. I'm going to make two stopwatch objects. And this is also, I have an ulterior motive. It's to prove that if I have two stopwatches, so if I went to the store and bought two stopwatches and held one in each hand, each stopwatch is independent. Just like I can make two vectors and they're independent. I'm going to run one stopwatch to time the entire big experiment. Then I'm going to use other stopwatches to time each individual piece of it so that we can compare all of the different aspects of the experiment. Okay, so for all four experiments, list, vector, set, and unordered set, I'm going to work with 25,000 elements. And I'm going to begin by creating whatever data structure I'm working with, in this case a list. I'm going to insert 25,000 elements, the squares of the first 25,000 natural numbers, starting at zero. And I'm going to print how long that took. Because that way I, get a, I can gauge whether maybe you know, a set might have fast searching, but how do I know that insertion isn't really slow? I want to know how long every part of the process takes. So I insert 25,000 elements. And then I'm going to do two different kinds of searches. First, I'm going to do 25,000 searches for elements that do exist. So all of these elements will be found in the, in the uh, collection. And I, I actually have added some logic here. In case one of them doesn't get found, that means I've made a mistake. Because I know that the squares of the first 25,000 natural numbers are in the collection. So if it doesn't get found, and I'll show off this function in a minute, if the found function returns false, then I had a problem. I made some kind of mistake. So I should throw an exception here, because that means there's an error in the experiment. Um, and then I'm going to run 25,000 invalid lookups. I'm going to search for 25,000 things that aren't in the collection. And here, um, a square plus six is never going to be a different square. So I, I know that all of these values will not be found. And so I do 25,000 searches where I expect the element isn't found. And again, I check my work. I make sure that if it does get found by accident, that I, I fix the experiment. Okay, so all three experiment, all four experiments are of the same form. They have three trials. First insert, then do 25,000 valid lookups, then 25,000 invalid lookups. And then at the end, time how long the whole thing took. So I have this big stopwatch that's been running the whole time, and I, I, I just see how long all three things took together. Just in case one day the structure has fast searching but slow insertion or something like that. So there's the version for a list. If I have to write a function for each data structure to decide how I search it. Um, so here I take a list. I, I guess I named it V, but I mean, you get the idea. Um, so I take a list and I search it by looping over it and just asking at each step, is the element I'm looking at the element I'm searching for? So that's how it works for a list. For a vector, same story. I take a vector, I ask, I loop over it, I ask, is the element I'm searching for equal to the element you gave me? Um, and so and then I return true if so, and at the end, if I haven't found it, I return false. Notice that for a list and vector, because this is the only way I know how to search a list and a vector, um, notice that this means if I'm doing a valid lookup, if I'm searching for something that is present, maybe it'll end a bit faster. So it might be that um, vectors and lists are faster if I'm searching for things that are found. Uh, if I'm searching for something that isn't found, I have to look at every single element before I can stop. Um, to search inside the set, I just call s.contains, because we know from a previous video 
that um, s.contains, among other things, is a fast way to search a set. So a clever function that somehow manages to leverage the internal structure of a set to decide if an element is present. And the same is true for an unordered set. So all of these are posted. Take a look at them just so you don't think I have something up my sleeve. Because I, I'm recording a video of this, you have no idea to what extent I've cooked the books. I, I, I claim that I haven't. I, I, I hope you believe me. But as with any other experiment, you should never take somebody else's word for it. That is, that is one of the, um, I think, core tenets of science in general, is sure, if I do an experiment, you can look at the result and be interested by it and be impressed by it or something, but don't necessarily believe everything you read. Um, so I've posted all of these files. You, I hope, can verify that they do match what I say that they are. So what I posted actually is what, I've ha what I have in the video and that the results are congruent on your machine to mine. The exact times might be off by a couple of seconds depending on the um, running time of your machine, but the overarching conclusions that I draw, I hope you'll find the same ones. I hope that you can, that you can reproduce the experiment that I'm doing. Um, I guess I forgot to mention one other thing, which is when I'm adding elements to my sets, so if I make a set or an unordered set, I use dot insert. I don't use dot push back because obviously sets don't have that. So here with set and unordered set, I use dot insert. Okay, so I want to run all four of these. I, I guess I will uh, recompile them and we don't need to see the code too much. So I'll just scroll this up so we can try and look at them all in one place. Um, I've pre-written the compile commands. Okay, so there's the list one. There's the vector one. And there's the set one. And then here is the unordered set one. All right, so I'm going to run the one at a time searching a list. So I'm going to add 25,000 elements, search for 25,000 things that are present, then search for 25,000 things that aren't present. And we notice that searching a list, doing that number of searches, so I'm doing 25,000 searches over a list that has 25,000 things in it. So it takes a fair amount of time, it takes four seconds. Inserting the elements took almost no time at all. So as we know from the insertion test, inserting 100,000 elements takes about 0.01 seconds. So inserting into this list doesn't take very much time at all. Searching though takes a pretty noticeable amount of time. We actually had to wait for that to finish. It took 12 seconds. Um, I'm gonna run it again. Uh, and I expect the results will be congruent. It'll still be around 12 seconds, but it might be off by a bit, but we should make sure. So still about uh, in the same ballpark for insertion time, the look, valid lookups about four seconds, invalid lookups about eight seconds. So about 12 seconds in total. Uh, and keep in mind that uh, this benchmark, the searching one, doesn't really play at any of the strengths of lists. So lists aren't, are, are a bit weaker than vectors for inserting at the end, which is what I'm doing here. So we should expect that the vector might have better performance. Um, similarly, iterating over a list does require a bit more overhead than iterating over a vector, because with a vector, everything's in one place. With a list, everything is scattered, and we, we have to follow all those pointers to navigate a linked list. So I should expect a list is going to come out looking pretty weak in this experiment. And that's partially due to the design of the experiment. And again, that's how science works. When we design an experiment, we need to be conscious of the ways in which the experiment might disadvantage one of its participants. So now we'll search a vector. Okay, so inserting 25,000 elements took 0 0.002 seconds. So a bit faster than a list. Searching, doing 25,000 valid lookups, 3.6 seconds versus 4 seconds. So not that much faster, but a little bit faster. And that, that's, uh, I think, a recognition of the extra overhead of navigating a list. Um, we'll run it one more time. And again, insertion 0 0.002. Um, and valid lookups, let's see, 3.6, so pretty steady at 3.6 seconds. Um, so a little bit faster than the list, but not really out of the ballpark. So still 12 seconds versus 11 seconds. So roughly equivalent. Um, and I would say if I were using vectors or lists in my programs and I did a lot of searching, I wouldn't switch a vector to a list based only on these experimental results. The difference really isn't big enough for me to care that much, unless time is absolutely critical. Because if I'm using a list, I probably have a good reason to do so beyond just searching. Okay, so that's fine. So searching with 25,000 things in our collection, keeping in mind 25,000 is not a big number. 25,000 things and 25,000 searches, 12 seconds on a list, 11 seconds on a vector. Now, is that respectable? Well, we don't know yet because, again, until this week, our world was just vectors and maybe a little bit about lists from 111. Let's try the version with sets. There it is. I'll run it again. And there it is again. The entire benchmark took 0 0.05 seconds. The entire benchmark. Notice, though, inserting all the elements into a set did take longer than a vector or a list. So a vector and a list took 0, 0.00 something. So the list was 0 0.006, the vector was 0 0.002. 
the set 0 0.02. So almost 10 times longer, actually more than 10 times longer than the vector. Uh, and that's because the set is maintaining some internal organization. It takes a bit longer to keep that set up when you're inserting into a set. On the other hand, that pays dividends for searching. It took 3.6 seconds to do the valid lookups in a vector. It took 0 0.01 to do all of them on the set, 0 0.01. So that's more than, I guess what, 300 times a difference, um, or about, yeah, it's approximately 300 times difference. So the vector is 300 times slower than the set. Uh, and that's true of invalid lookups uh, even more so. Notice how invalid lookups took about the same amount of time, whereas on a vector, they took double the amount of time the valid lookups did. So the set is now, what, 600 times faster than the vector. 600 times. And of course, I hope that that paints the picture that I was going for, which is, if you want to search quickly, you should use a set. Just hands down, you should use a set. But we're not done yet. What about the unordered set? Now, unfortunately, the unordered set is actually pretty impressive, but there's no way we can compare the 600 time difference. Okay, I'll run it twice. The unordered set, so the um, regular set took 0 0.05 seconds for the entire benchmark, so about 0 0.055 seconds. The unordered set took 0 0.02, so the unordered set is more than twice as fast. Now, it, doesn't, it just doesn't look as impressive as the set versus vector, but this is a good reason to use an unordered set. If you don't care about keeping things in uh, ascending order or alphabetical order, then why bother? Why not just use an unordered set and you can get that extra, you know, double um, Im speed improvement uh, over a set. So you can, you can save half of the time over a set. And here we notice, again, insertion time is a bit faster for an unordered set because it doesn't have as rigorous an order to maintain. And the lookup time is really fast. Um, so I'll, I guess the argument we could make here is the more searching you're doing, the more dividends you get from the unordered set. So the, um, the uh, inserting into an unordered set is about twice as fast. Searching the unordered set is about four times as fast uh, as the regular set. And of course, again, compared to the vector and list, I mean, these are in a different world. But that is one reason why um, if we're choosing data structures, it's about deciding what operations are important and then selecting a data structure based on which data structure has the best uh, running time for those operations. Um, I encourage you to download this and try scaling it up. I chose 25,000 as the element count because I didn't want to make a video with too much dead air. But the difference becomes almost embarrassing for vectors versus sets if you scale it up to maybe 100,000 elements. Um, because you'll end up waiting for five minutes for the vector to finish, and the set is still sitting there at sub one second time complexity, which is a really big deal. Because we do in this course and in future courses work with tons of data sets that aren't just 25,000. They're not just a million. They could be a billion elements. And we want to search them or insert things into them very quickly. And so we want to escape from the world of just thinking about things in terms of C style arrays or vectors. Because there are times where that can be a crushing disadvantage. Our programs physically cannot run in time that we can manage because we're working with so much data.